the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Fear of the unknown. It's pretty powerful. In the spring of 2020, our world was upended by an unseen enemy. I remember standing here on a Lenten midweek service, feeling my phone vibrating like crazy as family and friends messaged saying, did you hear what happened at the Thunder game that night? That was the night that COVID came to Oklahoma City. Our lives were changed by a virus we little understood and we definitely couldn't see. We had no cure. And many faced it with a sense of terror and dread. After all, we saw the death tolls coming out of places like Italy. Sickness increased. Hospitals overflowed. At one point, we had the National Guard staffing our hospitals. Medical personnel strained to hold up under the staggering loads of care. Shortages abounded. Deaths mounted. The world seemed under siege. And months passed. A year passed. What would come next? Does it ever end? Or do we just wait for the next virus? Fear of the unknown. That's not even the first time in recent history a cataclysmic event to turn our world upside down. Many of us remember and still recall the morning of September 11th, 2001. We stood transfixed in front of our TVs that day trying to make sense of a senseless act. Security immediately tightened everywhere. The war on terror soon commenced worldwide. But these enemies cannot always be seen or easily found or even identified. When would the next event occur? Would a terrorist attack come to my neighborhood? Fear of the unknown, which now means that we have to take off our shoes and belts can't carry things over certain sizes now at the airport. Joseph lived with his own fear of the unknown. In our current culture, it may seem minor, but his dilemma was pretty serious. He was betrothed to a lovely young woman named Mary. Legally married in a union not yet consummated. It be about a year before the final celebration. But their marriage was real and it was binding. And Joseph certainly dreamed of a wonderful life with his new wife and possibly even a large family supported by a thriving carpentry trade. But suddenly, all these dreams seemed to be in serious question when Mary was found to be with child. She was pregnant and Joseph knew he wasn't the father, which meant that somebody else was. But what should he do? A future with Mary was now fraught with complications socially. He could continue with the marriage, but it would not be so simple anymore. The Old Testament law called for an adulteress to be stoned. And yet this was unthinkable for him to get them married. So he couldn't go there. An option within the law allowed another solution. So Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put Mary to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. Quiet divorce. Shame would be avoided, as well as punishment for unfaithfulness. He loved her and didn't wish any more undue hardship upon her. And as Joseph deliver, deliberated upon this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, a special divine messenger from heaven, and a needed one, too. But the first words from the angel revealed Joseph's struggle involved more than just hesitation and concern. Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife. Joseph was struggling with fear. Fear is the enemy of hope. 
It robs us of the assurance that God is in control, that God has a plan, that even the darkness of the present might yet become a light of a better day. The Sunday after 9-11, churches were at the fullest that they had been in decades. Coming through the pandemic, people that think God are in charge have dropped from 70% to 30 God's solution to Joseph's fear, however, was not just the assurance that all things might work out in the end. He must have been surprised by the amazing promise he heard from the angel. Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Talk about just dropping a bombshell on somebody. Mary wasn't just pregnant. In her child, in her womb was conceived a child by the Holy Spirit. God was his father. And the name he was instructed to give this child, Yeshua, Joshua, Jesus. He who saves. Or the Lord saves. Depending on how you want to translate it. Here, Joseph was concerned about his immediate personal circumstances, his reputation, Mary's welfare, his own questions. And God was planning something much grander. He was planning to deliver mankind from sin itself and thus from death. What fear could be worse than the fear of death itself? If hope could survive death, it could survive death anything. So much change in Joseph's life. So many unknowns in the future. How could he possibly entertain any real hope for tomorrow when he hardly knew what tomorrow would bring? But God was with him. Emmanuel. The one over which he watched as a new foster father would be the true promise for all mankind. Joseph had everything even when at times it felt like he had so little. Late into the pandemic, our world tried to reemerge and find its footing. It's still trying today. The economy's wobbled, inflation has gone up and down and back up. Our communities have become polarized. It's hard not to worry about what tomorrow my brain, whether we're up to the challenges just around the corner. The world changes around us faster than we can comprehend and adjust. The world beneath our feet shifts and shakes. We worry for our children, for our grandchildren, and their future in this torn up, broken, crazy world. We even worry for our own futures as we age. Fear grips with the clamp of an icy cold hand of terror and pins our hopes to the ground. And then we hear it again, God's own messenger. Straight from the very throne room of heaven itself, the angel now turns to us. The one born of Mary is Jesus. Yahweh saves. This one delivered you from your sins and your certain death. You don't have to fear this one born of Mary, he is Emmanuel, God with you. You do not have to fear. You can hope again. Hope not just for this fleeting moment. Hope for today. Hope for tomorrow. For the next year. Hope for eternity. For your hope is grounded in God's promised presence. Sent to save us. And be there for us. As Paul declares in Romans... No one can stand against us if God is for us. No one can frustrate God's plan. Nothing. No one can tear us away from God's presence. Nothing's terrorizing us in the moment or fears of what is to come. Nothing in all of the created order, nothing 
For the one born of Mary is the deliverer from sin, Emmanuel. And with that, we have hope. The angel's message of hope to Joseph in the midst of our fear of his fear gives us hope as we fear our unknowns. A hope that cannot be disappointed. A hope grounded in God's assuring promise. A hope that survives time itself. An eternal hope in Christ Jesus our Lord.